The sneaky thing about radioactivity is that it's pretty much invisible. And because of that, most of us don't really give it a second thought. You know, it's basically abstract to us. You'd be surprised to know, though, that radiation's actually fairly common. And in fact, you're being pounded right now, at this very moment, by cosmic radiation from space. Radiation's basically the ninja of physics. That's why I built this, an alpha particle spark detector. It's portable and uses high voltage as an indicator for the presence of alpha particles. It was a really fun build, and so was learning that we have radioactive metal on our ceilings. Alpha, beta, and gamma, those are the three types of radiation which you might be familiar with. Alpha particles are ejected helium nuclei. Despite traveling at 15,000 kilometers a second, they generally can't penetrate through paper. Beta consists of ejected electrons, traveling at 90% the speed of light. More powerful, they're able to penetrate through paper, but stopped by most metal foils. Gamma rays are the most energetic. They're little roid-raging photons, only stopped by a few feet of concrete or a couple inches of lead. Then there's cosmic radiation, which is both really cool and totally natural. It consists of atom fragments such as electrons, protons, and atomic nuclei, which smash into our atmosphere, producing muons. These muons then rain down onto the planet. We know some of this radiation comes from supernovas, but it's still currently up for debate where exactly the rest of it comes from. Check this out, though. In Egypt in 2017, researchers actually discovered a previously unknown chamber in the Great Pyramid of Giza, thanks to muons. Using muon detectors, they mapped an area in the pyramid where a greater number of muons passed through the stone, meaning a void. So cosmic rays can be useful. While it won't detect muons, this detector will allow you to visualize alpha particles in real time. It's super cool. So here's the materials I used to build it and what went into making it. The power supply for this is from a DIY video of mine which normally produces 15 kilovolts. I figured I'd try acrylic for a change, so the base consists of two 7-inch discs welded to 2.5 inch supports. Around the edge of the top I have holes drilled which will make sense later. In the center of the base sits a 6 kilovolt DC power supply. On top is a steel plate. It sits on another acrylic disc about an eighth of an inch thick, and a washer is added to further lift up the plate. This was experimentally determined. This is all then bolted into place as well. Next, I cut two identical sections of the perf board. Quarter inch nylon spacers added, then bolted. These boards flank the metal plate and basically act as anchors for the wire. Making sure it contacts this bolt, I ran a single length of 36 gauge wire back and forth down the length of the supports. Little notches in the perf board catch the wire. The spacing between the layers is both precise and intentional. Since in this setup my power source produces about 6 kilovolts, these wire layers are spaced out just beyond the point where 6 kilovolts is able to jump across on its own. Lastly, in parallel with the power source is a 15 kilovolt 1 nanofarad capacitor. Putting it all together, the high voltage output is connected to the metal plate through a 5.1 mega ohm resistor. The ground is attached to the steel wire. Pretty easy build, so I thought. <laughs> uh, regardless, I don't normally have radioactive metal just sitting around my place to test this with. I stopped that after the feds. So after a bit of research, I did find a very easy way to get your hands on some radioactive Americonium. Just look up. Brands contain. Uh, real quick, Editor Jay here. Uh, apparently I was feeling a little extra patriotic because it's not pronounced Americonium, it's americium. I say it a couple times throughout the video. But uh, on to where you can find it in your house. Smoke alarms. Most brands contain a tiny piece of the radioactive metal which is directly used in the smoke detection process. So when I learned this, I Dale Earnhardted my way to a local store and grabbed me a couple. You know, I really wasn't trying to cause the next Fukushima, so I very carefully took one of these apart. <laughs> Anyways, I got it open. Inside this protective shielding is where I found the radioactive metal. 
a small button containing americium. It emits a lot of alpha radiation and it's tiny, so I decided to glue it to the end of a rod to easily handle. This is what I tested my spark detector with. Now, if I've spaced the wire correctly, when I turn this on, there should be zero sparkage going on. Let's take a look. Perfect. However, when struck by alpha particles from this americonium sample, In reality, that's not really what happened the first time I turned it on. Not even close. Whoa! Dude, why are you so angry? Oh, great, I made a detector that detects air. To have it detect radioactivity, I figured there were two main variables for me to experiment with. The distance between the plate and the wire, and the diameter of the wire. So, undoing my beautiful lacing job, I removed the wire and replaced it with thicker 30 gauge wire, which I also strung back and forth as well, resulting in this. Seriously? I also tried moving the metal plate closer up using additional washers. This basically turned the device into an angry banshee triggered by radioactivity. This was an improvement, I, I guess, but I eventually bounced back and forth probably a dozen or two dozen times changing a bunch of variables, and I eventually got it working brilliantly. So this is able to detect alpha radiation. That must be a super complex process how it does this, right? Not really. Well, since the radiation coming from the americium sample is of the ionization type, when an alpha particle flies past that wire towards the metal plate, it leaves behind a partially ionized pathway. And since ionized gas is more conductive, this basically causes a trigger situation where the electricity discharges between the two electrodes. And that's why you see sparks. And here's the cool jazz. That means each spark indicates an actual pathway which an alpha particle took through the air. Now, tell me that's not cool. Oh, and this thing also allows you to prove what I stated earlier. Alpha radiation generally cannot penetrate through paper. So, a functional alpha radiation detector using some pretty basic supplies. On Plasma Channel's Instagram, I hinted at another build entirely. I think I can make this detector 3D to allow for better visualization. Let me know in the comments down below if you want to see me attempt that build. Now this topic was actually a viewer request, so here's looking at you, Plasma Nation. On that note, drop a comment down below with your thoughts or if you have any suggestions on how to improve this thing. A massive thank you to all my Patreons, in particular, these fine folks right here. And thank you for watching this video. You stay classy, you classy cats.